Greetings, my people. It's Anna Renee, your love power goddess, and I am reading today for your enjoyment from the book Netu Netter, Volume 1 by Ra Un Nefer Amen Shechem Er Shechem of the Asar Aset Society. And this is the great oracle of Tehuti and the Egyptian system of spiritual cultivation. I am reading about the god Seker. And it is the third sphere of the tree of life. I've already read all the way through 10 up until 4. 10 being Geb, 9 being Aset, 8 being Sebek, 7 being Het Heru, 6 being Heru, 5 being Herukuti, 4 being Ma'at, and now we're at 3, which is Seker. We're at the top of the tree now. This is where the true work begins for that true special sense of self, that God aspect of you as a human being. This is the high levels, my people. So let's see what it is that our Baba Shechem or Shechem Ra'an Nefer Amen is teaching us right here. Seker. Seker, the third sphere of the tree of life, is the divine faculty that is in charge of the life force, Ra, which is in which is the formative base of all things in the world. Although the source of life is infinite. Each entity is allowed to share in its infinity through a series of cycles of births. Each entity is thus allotted a finite portion of this life force at a time for its adventure in the world. This recycling principle governs the cycles of birth, growth, decay, death, rebirth, and on. The life force behaves in this manner in conformity with the divine intention of guiding man to the realization of his divinity. Would most people bother to develop themselves and exert themselves if they were to be born with full functionality, as many reptiles and lower creatures are, eternal youth and indestructibility? We are thus spurred on to exert ourselves in our youth to provide for the days that will surely come when we will be incapable of doing so, and of course by the ultimate, which is death. The subjection of the existence of all things to cyclical revolutions, which is governed by the deity, quote-unquote, divine faculty, capere, divides their life term into two fundamental phases, birth, rebirth, slash growth, and decay, slash death, rebirth into the plane of origin. Thus, we achieve an infinitude of experiences through an infinite chain of finite existences. The phase of birth, rebirth, is under the dominion of Kepere, Aima, the fertile mother in the Canaanite tradition, while the phase of decay and death is symbolized by the Hinu or Af, dead flesh, boats, in which travels the aged Rob, quote unquote, Ama, the dreaded sterile mother, and Kali. Kepere or Aima brings all things into manifestation through the 50 sound units of power residing in a third sphere. These sound units, which are the basis of all Hekau, are metaphorized as the eggs of the beetle symbolizing Kepere, the 50 gates of Bina, the 50 skulls strung as the necklace of Kali, the Indus Kush Seker, the 50 oarsmen propelling the boat of Osar, and they are analogous to the 50, 
the 500,000 or so eggs that every woman is born with. At this level, these spiritual powers do not manifest the things of which they are the germs, but the underlying structure, the divine plan, that provides the order governing the harmonious interaction of the forces shaping the formation of things and their interaction. These structures appoint the places in space and time, ordering all manifestations. Incidentally, because its creative function corresponds to the female gender, which the Canaanite tradition supports, the goddess Aima, this deity often appears, possesses, in its female form when invoked. As such, her name is Sekert. The male side of the deity rules over the death process. Sekur was the deity of the necropolis at Saqqara. Allied to it in this function was the monster, quote-unquote, Amit or Amam, whose functions was to destroy the Ab, part of the spirit housing the conscious and will, of the deceased who failed to live in harmony with the laws of Ma'at, divine laws. During life, its activities are felt as the pangs of conscious, guilt, self-recriminations, etc. These are warnings that we are on the path to a failed destiny. This is to be expected as Seker governs our destiny. The comedic term for destiny, quote unquote, is Seker, S K H E R, and for plan, quote unquote, is Seker, S E K H E R, Can occup which are clearly etymolo etymologically related to Seker. S-E-K-E-R. No two things can occupy the same place at the same time. Divine law, therefore, guarantees all things their day in the sun. Our coming into being and the unfolding of all events in our life are controlled by the spiritual forces, Pata, at the secure level for the sake of maintaining order in the world. Destiny, therefore, is nothing more or less than the expression of the structure, the plan that governs the unfolding of people's lives in order to guarantee them success. It is amazing to see how people are aware of the confusion and disorder that follows from the lack of planning and structure, yet fail to realize that the same would happen in nature and in the world if the Supreme Being had not laid a plan to guide the lives of men and nations. As above, so below. When we die or transcend the way of life in which earthly pleasure and personal interests are the motivating factors of our actions and undertakings, we come under the governorship of the deity Seker, in either case, we have died to the earth physically or spiritually. The doctrines of Seker represent, then, the teachings that kill. We must remember that this does not mean a joyless life. Quite the contrary, it is one, as we will later see, that leads to greater ecstasy. When we keep in mind that the spirit is essentially unconditioned, it will be realized that our spirit is ever receptive to be pro reprogrammed to express joy and pleasure in response to any situ situation or stimulus. We can therefore transcend a way of life in which our will is led by what gives us pleasure and change over to a way in which pleasure follows our will to live new truths. Allied with the idea of dying to the things of the world is the host of symbols used to explain the domain of the deity. In the book 
of that which is in the underworld, quote unquote, the fourth hour, which represents the domain of Seker, is described as a region in which there are no cultivation fields to be distributed to the faithful followers of Ra. It is full of thick darkness. Its floors is covered with sand, and it is lacking in water, hence barren. This region is called Ta, land of Sekri, Ta Sekri. Note that the Kri, K-R-I, quote unquote, in the name conceals the Heka, Kring, of the deity. The truths that we must live at this sphere of the tree of life corresponds to the cycles governing natural phenomena. These were discussed in previous chapters. The point to note here is that the times for eating, exercising, having sex, performing certain types of work, meditating, must not be dictated by our feelings, cravings, social or economic factors, but by the cyclical mechanisms governing nature. The discipline of adhering to the cycles governing life that this sphere, sphere imposes upon us is for the sake of enabling us to succeed in the use of the words of power as their manifestations are ordered by the law of cycles in order to keep them from conflicting with each other. All hekau, plural of heka, are based on 50 single sound units, which are symbolized in the Phoenician Kabbalistical system as the 50 gates of Bina, or the goddess Ama, through which all things in the world came into being and are recycled. In India, she appears as Kundala, or Kali, great mother who wears the necklace of 50 skulls, as mistress of the words of power and mother of all living things, she is depicted traveling in the boat of the star Septed Sirius, which is propelled by 50 oarsmen. These sound units are distributed throughout the 14 chakras, making up man's subtle body. As this sphere corresponds to the highest manifestation of man's spiritual power, it is the dwelling place of the power aspect of his spirit. In the Kemetic tradition, it is the Shechem, Sahidic, Coptic, Shechem. In the Kabbalistical, the Shekinah. In the Indus Kush tradition, the Shakti. Men who wield this power were given the title of Shechem. In fact, this is the true title for the committed king of kings. The term found its way into the Arabic, where we find that the great royal leaders are called Sheik. In India, the Kundalini Yogis are called Shakta, and their counterpart further up north are called Shamans. It is important to note that all of these cognate terms all begin with the letter SH. Egyptologists commonly render the term as Sekhem, even though many words written with the hieroglyphic for the S appear as SH in the Coptic, Hebraic, and Phoenician. We see the same in the Hindu rendition of many Dravidian words. For example, Shakti and Shakta are also rendered Sakti and Sakta. Okay, my people, we are now on a higher level of the tree of life, and so we're going to go into the deeper aspects here, speaking of Sikar. We had to read that first part to give a basic information of sorts about this more powerful aspect of the human. Okay, 
more spiritual, I would say. <laughs> it's just a higher level. It's that ascension that we are seeking, okay? And it's for us. So let us go in now and see what is being taught here for the God Seker. In the Kemitic, the name is Seker or Ptah, P-T-A-H, Aumit or Kepere. In the Canaanite, it is Tzaf Kiel, and that's spelled T-Z as in zebra, A-P-H-K-I, Tzaf Fiel. I know I'm butchering that. <laughs> Ama or Aima. Notice that there are many more names. In the Kabbalistical system, it is Bina. In Yoruba, it is Babaluaye. In the Indus Kush system, it is Kali. And it is the third sphere of the Tree of Life. Its planet is Saturn, and its day is Saturday. The color is indigo and black. The number is 13. The gems and metals are blue sapphire, onyx, and lead. The time of year is the sidereal full moon in both Capricorn and Aquarius. In esoteric herbalism, the baths are Artemisia vulgaris, Jerusalem tea, bitter broom. The oils are myrrh and cypress, the incense, myrrh, cypress, southern wood leaves. The hekau, mantras, words of powers, words of power are the spiritual is cream. K R I N G, and the planetary is Ong Prong Pring Praung, which is to be chanted at midnight. The spiritual direction is east, and the mundane direction is southwest. The personality portfolio is through its action on the Kayabit, which is the animal spirit. The frigid and dry energy of Saturn has the following effects on a personality. Sphere 9. The emotional traits of positive would be stable, sober, steadfast, reserved in speech, thrifty, studious, austere, steadfast in friendship, reliable, appreciative of structure and limitations, patient, hardworking. The negative traits would be misanthropic, taciturn, morose, depressed, covetous, jealous, mistrustful, suspicious, liar, malicious, miscontent, timorous, miserly, unappreciative of structure and limitations, Acquisis acquisitive, unsympathetic, stubborn, Inhibited, phobias, mistrustful, unadaptive, separative, envious, avaricious, and stingy. The mental traits, positive ones, would be suppression of thought processes through deep concentration resulting from perfection in the men ah meditation system, leading to the ability to A, awaken and direct the units of spiritual power, the Neteru, deities, spirits, and B, enter in attunement with the spiritual forces that are in charge of the orderly unfoldment of events in the world. Hence, good powers of planning, organizing, hence, appreciative of structure and limitation. Now, the negative mental traits would be a lack of concentration, hence, poor planning, absence of plans, unappreciative of structure and limitations. Social correspondences, careers, functions, elderly persons, property owners, farmers, miners, subway workers, 
funerary industry, priests and priestesses skilled in the use of words of power. The spiritual portfolio, imposition of the divine law from within by deities and spirits, destiny, success in life, organization, structure, cycles, hierarchy, phases, limitations, delays, and obstructions. Now, the spiritual functions, or function. No two things can occupy the same place at the same time. Divine law and order, therefore, guarantee all things their day in the sun. The coming into being <clears throat> and the unfolding of all events in life are controlled by spiritual forces for the sake of maintaining order in the world. The spiritual forces maintain order in the world by organizing all things and their parts into a hierarchy of place and time. Regarding life events, we therefore do not make up the plans that we will follow, but seek to intuit the spiritual structure controlling the events in our lives as ordained by the spirits. Incidentally, these structures or patterns that are woven into the energy slash matter substratum are analogous to the patterns that are formed when sound vibrations are deployed over the surface of water, etc. They have been reproduced in many cultures and are known as veves, yantras, etc. People with a well-developed ability to concentrate which enables them to intuit the spiritual structures underlying events, are said to be good planners. They also have the capacity to accept and appreciate the limitations that these structures impose on their thoughts, emotions, and actions. As these structures guarantee each thing, its time and place, for manifesting by maintaining order, these people are successful in their lives. Those who lack the ability or inclination to concentrate deeply enough to intuit the underlying structures of things either fail to plan or lack the, capa the capacity to accept and appreciate structures and limitations. Thus, they run into what they interpret as obstructions, delays, etc. And lacking help from other spiritual quarters end up with a miserly existence as they live like trains trying to run without staying on the tracks. Special correlates. Seker slash ma'at. In the process of spiritual development, we must first master the doctrine of the law as taught in the ma'at stage, which precedes that of Seker. Ma'at is the communication of the divine law to the mind of man, while Seker is the demand to live it. Success in living the law of Ma'at depends on the men of work at the Heru stage. See Heru. Seker Heru. The ability to concentrate depends on proficiency in the men of the meditation discipline of the Heru stage of meditation and initiation. The taking of Minab to its heights involves the ability to totally ignore all instinctive, emotional, and sensual impulses. Hence, we are as one who is dead. This is the basis for Seker's appellation as God of the dead. Seker slash Heru. We have seen in past chapters that the third sphere, Seker, is the, com the complement of the seventh, Het Heru. They are the complete antithesis of each other. Where Seker is fully introverted, uncaring of sensual pleasures, steady, etc., Het Heru is extroverted, dependent on sensual pleasures, unsteady, etc. Yet, the arousal of the life force, a chi, ra, or kundalini, that is needed to vitalize the will to allow it to succeed in its application of men ab, depends on het heru's indulgence 
in sexual and pleasurable activities. The development of the capacity to concentrate to carry out the functions of sick care is therefore strengthened by moderation in pleasure and weakened by both the excess or suppression of sensual indulgence. Sick care Geb. Geb's importance to sick care also revolves around the relationship between the life force and concentration. Here, attention to health in order to nourish the life force keeps its channels open and its forces in harmony with each other. Key phrases. Attention to cycles, stock market and economic cycles, promote success. Perseverance in steadfastness, steadfastness, stubbornness, patient, methodical, attention to tedious details, delays, denials, obstruction, sobriety, pessimism, caution, inhibition, scruples, restraint. Good organization and planning, mental not computerized, which is the Beck. Abiding by the Constitution, bylaws, plan. Slow at arriving at a conclusion. By being thoughtful, stop and ponder, meditate. Biological correspondences. Physi all physiology. The frigid and dry energy of Saturn is the basis of the crystallizing functions that govern the formation of our bony system. It is also the seat of the catabolic processes that govern aging, thus limiting the lifespan of life forms. Pathology, where the vitality, solar force, and immunity, martial force, are weak, the Saturnial energy generates disorders characterized by the abnormal deposition of crystallized materials, stones, uric acid, in various parts of the body, thus causing gout, gallstones, rheumatoid arthritis. It is also the cause of all chronic and deep-seated disorders, paralysis, sclerosis, blood impurities. Comedic Therapeutics Healing through hekau, words of power, refrigerant, hypnagogic, styptic, astringent, antipyretic, Chinese medicine, spleen meridian, cold disease patterns, use warming, spleen liver herbs, center rectifying formula, liver warming decoction, ephedra decoction, wotu aconite decoctions, etc. Dryness patterns, nourish blood and yin, phlegm disease patterns. Spiritual counsel. When you receive a sick care reading, you must stop your forward movement to achieve your goal and meditate on your objective in order to intuit the structure governing your undertaking and thus come up with a viable plan. On the level of set care, the meditation process depends on the ability to still all thought process, processes, make the mind blank, in order to sense the underlying structure of your undertaking. Although most people will not be able to attain this level of meditation, they should at least try to slow down the thought process in order to fully concentrate on intuiting the plan, drawing from past experiences, this is a compromise. All things considered, elders 56 and up will be most successful as their greater experience and lower metabolic rate, Sikar's catabolic mode, will provide them with a greater abundance of food for thought and patience. It will be advantageous for young people under 42 who receive this reading to seek the advice of capable elders. On another level, the oracle may be advising you to remember that pleasure is not in the things that are enjoyed, but is a manifestation of the spirit of the enjoyer. Thus, for the duration of the undertaking inquired about, you must withdraw 
your pleasure from earthly or personal things and place it in the universal and spiritual things. This is a requirement for manifesting the powers of Ra, which have their matrices, the eggs of Kepera, the 50 matrikas, etc., in Sekert. Yes, my people. Well, we're going forward with it, huh? And Sekert is really some powerful stuff right here. This level is all about control, okay? Allowing a certain kind of control to control, allowing the spirit to control and shape you. And it's a place where I would say most people have not reached. <laughs> you just haven't reached that place. I haven't reached that place. But you know, for me personally, I feel attracted to it and I'm sort of wondering <laughs> if it has to do with my, uh, my nat natal chart, my astrological natal chart, which is so filled with uh, this energy of the Capricorn uh, Saturnian kind of thing. I just was watching a video that I made a while back reading from uh, that, anci that ancient astrological secrets of the Jews revealed book that talks about astrology from a Kabbalistical perspective. And I was reading, uh, well, watching the one that I read that I did about Aquarius and how in ancient times Aquarius was ruled by Saturn you know in fact Aquarius is the light side of Saturn the diurnal side as they say while Capricorn is the nocturnal I guess the dark side but both are ruled by uh, Saturn and that Uranus I think that's the other planet that was arbitrarily assigned to a Aquarius, but in the ancient times, in the Egyptian and the Kabbalistical times, Saturn ruled, and it makes better sense, you know. As I thought about that, I'm like, wow, okay, so mine is an Aquarian rising. Nope, 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 no. Nope. Mine is a Aquarian moon. Mine is a Libra rising, and I am a Sagittarian on the cusp of Capricorn. So, and my, I have Saturn in, uh, in, in Sagittarius, I think. I got to look at my chart again. But I have a huge amount of Saturnian energy. And now with a my moon in Aquarius, now I'm learning that really I even got even more Saturn. <laughs> so it's a trip. Saturn in uh, my Sagittarius because I'm on the cusp. And then in Capricorn, of course, in my chart, I think it's the fourth house, I think. So I got all that Capricorn right there, all that Saturnian. And then moving on over to Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> which is truly ruled really by Saturn. So I, you know, I just got a whole lot of Saturn going on. Maybe that's why there was a point in time when I was attracting, I I have attracted so many Saturn men is is ridiculous. You know, it's crazy. I, I couldn't understand it. <laughs> Five or six different, I mean, just about every man that I was there friends with was a Saturn. Capricorn type of person, <laughs> somebody who was a Capricorn. It was a trip how that was happening to me, you know. And uh, yeah, <laughs> try to understand that kind of thing. But maybe it's time for me to really sit with this kind of an energy, this secure energy, you know. Maybe I'm being called to this. But that's all here and there, my people. Sorry about going on and on like that. Let me get back on point here, okay? So, reading Sekir. With its roots in Amen and Asar, Sekir guarantees the interests of the whole as well as all individuated existences by providing the structural framework that orders their coming into being and their development. It is the fourth 
of the chief stimuli of the forces urging and pushing us to honor the universal interests. It is opposed by the influences emanating from the organizing and ordering faculty of the person Het Heru, which is the seventh sphere. And then Seker spiritual, an enlightened will, Heru positive, knows that before taking action on a decision, there must be the knowledge of the underlying structure, the plan governing what must be done. As the structural framework of all events are laid down by the deities and spirits, one does not therefore make up a plan. Instead, the thought processes are stilled in order to sense and intuit the structural framework created by the spiritual agencies. In addition, every step taken in carrying out the undertaking must follow the plan. Incidentally, the Jewish Kabbalists, not understanding that the mental process of this sphere were to be stilled, but knowing from Canaanite sources that it involved some sort of intuition, named the sphere Bina, understanding, quote unquote as there are mental processes involving the realization of understanding, quote, unquote, at the fourth and fifth spheres as well, the Jewish Kabbalistical correspondence must be rejected. Mundane. You must intuit the structure that underlies, hence gives order to the unfolding of events intuition comes into play that spiritual aspect you have to sit still with yourself in order to intuit it's hard to sit still with yourself in a noisy busy crowded world <laughs> so much going on so much to distract but if you are distracted, then you never find out the truth. You never sit with yourself to intuit the truth of the structure, which is the underlying of what it is that you are here to do. There is a structure to what it is that you are here to perform or to do or to create. You need to know it in order to do it. And you don't know it if you don't sit still long enough to intuit that very structure. It's heavy, my people. Can you see how it is? All the noise that they put forth that keeps us occupied, preoccupied, all the way to the end of our lives. And we miss the boat in terms of what it is we're supposed to do anyway. Okay. <laughs> Note. It is important to remember that the mental process operating from Amen to Seker is one of intuition, which is the ability to correctly learn from within one's own spirit. If you receive one of these metutu in your readings and you are not able to intuit the information that is required, you must then seek counsel from capable persons represented by the respective metut. Your meditations with the Heka of the deity will help to attract such persons. In strictly materialistic situations, such persons will be primarily your top geniuses in science, literature, art, etc., and secondarily your PhDs, etc. In matters regarding life, social issues, etc., such persons will be your sages. Okay, so let's continue on here. So, the shaping facts, that was the shaping factor, the shaping factors of success. Now I'm going to read the shaping factors of failure with Seker. An unenlightened individual, Heru negative, is ignorant of or does not believe in lacks direct experience 
the fact that deities and spirits control the course of events for the purpose of establishing and maintaining order in the world. Thus, his plans are based on concepts for which there are no objective counterpoints, counterparts. He therefore runs into delays and obstructions and denials, etc. Sometimes those so-called delays, obstructions, and denials are what is needed for you to stop, okay? <laughs> Stop in your tracks, sit still, and into it, rather than continuing to ram and ram into the brick wall, you know? Those delays are blessings in disguise, really, for someone who's paying attention. Okay, so let us continue. So in summary, Sakir, the source of the plans that must guide the steps that we take in carrying out our undertakings and the patience to accept the limitations of the underlying structure. So there it is my people. We have just read the God Seker and the strength and the power and the forcing of one to sit still with oneself. <laughs> the forcing of uh, making an inward investigation, so to speak, intuiting the truth. This is that high level. So you are interacting with the spirits on this level, with intuition, with those gods and those spirits within, where the information of you reside and how the plan of you shall be laid forth this is pretty deep you know this is that higher level you know and it's only sphere three there's still two which is tehuti and one which is alsar okay so there's still even higher reaches to reach within and this is within each and every one of us, these levels of our spirits. Imagine if you have all these on, you know, in proper alignment, how powerful you will be, you know, how incredibly powerful and magnetic you will be. Can you understand why there's so much in the world that tries to disrupt your ability to sit still with yourself and intuit knowledge. As they say, education is drawing from within. The true definition of education is drawing from within. The knowledge that exists within. When people learn, oh, I'm good at this, or oh, I'm good at that, or that's something that they learn from within themselves, not from somebody telling them. You learn it within yourself. Children even do this, you know, if they are put in a position where they can discover, you know, the school systems of the Western world do not always allow this for children. But anyway, it is very important to have a true understanding of your goals, your your calling, pretty much. A lot of times we have a hard time even sitting still. <laughs> we are so hyperactive. Even adults, not children, not drugs that are given to children causing hyperactivity. I'm saying we are trained to be hyperactive, you know. We can't sit still for, some of us can't even sit still to be with ourselves without feeling a certain negative way, you know. Some of us are afraid to sit still with ourselves. We don't trust that what we will find within is actually divine. We, we feel that it might be demonic, 
which is not true, okay? <laughs> it's not true. It's a fear that we have. It's definitely not true and can be overcome, that kind of a fear. But my people, we are learning, okay? So I have just read from the book, The Metu Netter by... Ra on Nefer Amen, Shechem or Shechem, okay, which is in alignment with Zeker, which is where we are. That ability to have that kind of an insight, to have done that kind of a work, to have done that type of a meditation, and therefore have been titled Shechem or Shechem or Shakti or Shakta or Sheik or any of those terms, okay? Shechem or Shechem, Ra Un Nefer Amen. And therefore, from that ability, this whole series of books, the Metu Netter, and this it is volume one that gives the basic breakdown okay I believe it goes like the at least volume four five six I can't remember <laughs> but yes my people I hope you have enjoyed this reading well just reading from the book okay there will be a point in time when I feel strong enough to actually do a a reading from the cards okay <laughs> I think I've been having those cards for maybe a year and a half two years and have not you know, I just look at them. <laughs> One of these days, I'll reach that place. I'm not there just yet. At least I know that much, you know. <laughs> when I read from those cards, I want to be correct, not incorrect, okay? I'm not trying to uh, deceive people and mislead people, pretending to be what I'm not, you know. <laughs> There, There is the possibility that I'll never be ready to read from that deck of cards. Who knows? <laughs> I accept that if that's the case, but I'm striving to get to that place. And so, here it is. The God Seker, Sphere 3, on the Tree of Life. The beautiful system of spiritual cultivation that comes to us through our ancestors, those ancient Kemetic peoples of those long, long ancient times long ago. Okay, imagine the power that they generated. Is that why so many people try to uh, smuggle themselves into the land of Kemet? And once they got there and saw what they saw, they didn't know what they were looking at? <laughs> Even the wisest one still didn't quite know what it was that they were looking at, you know. They didn't understand what they were doing. They came close, but close is not always good enough, okay? <laughs> so, greetings of love and peace to each and every one of you. Peace and understanding of your true spiritual nature as the Kemetic people. Okay, descendants, okay, those great African people of those long ago times. You, my black brother and sister, are the descendants of those wonderful people, okay? So you understand what is being said when they say you descend from kings and queens. It's not an empty statement or slogan. It's real, all right? Peace and blessings to you.